Hello and welcome uh, to this week's preview of Elk City's football game Friday night uh, where they will take on a, another road game at Elgin. Um, we'll quickly recap two weeks ago when Elk City traveled to Tuttle uh, to play the Tigers. They were beaten 44-0 and shut out by a very good Tuttle team uh, that's ranked number one in 3A and uh, Tuttle did the same thing to Elgin last week in a 42-13 uh, victory against the Owls of Elgin. Um, formidable opponent. Uh, they outrushed Elk City uh, 247 to 9, I believe, in the first half alone, and led 31 nothing at half, and and just ran away with it. Uh, Elk City uh, just never got in a rhythm offensively. Could never get anything going in the passing game. Uh, struggled. The Tuttle defensive line was dominant, and, uh, and Elk City could never establish a running game uh, to open up anything down the field. Uh, Elias Wiseman uh, and Jarve Jackson both left those games, uh, that game with an injury. Uh, Elias is expected to return this Friday for Elgin. Jarve uh, was his timetable for a return set by doctors was two weeks. That two week date is Friday, so he will not play Friday against Elgin. Um, we'll just keep going with the injury report uh, beat that we're on here. Uh, Cole Rogers will make his return. Uh, actually, his 2012 debut, he was injured in the scrimmage against Altus, uh, kind of by default uh, eliminating him from the, the quarterback battle with Colin Feller. He will return uh, and play a lot of receiver um, as well as safety. Safety is probably the most important place for him right now uh, for Elk City on defense. And Coach uh, Elk City head coach Jason Sheck said this morning that he will play some quarterback, but it will be situational, maybe a – a certain play or if, if Feller isn't getting it done uh, during a particular game, uh, he's basically got another quarterback. It, it's uh, it's kind of motivation for either player to play well. Uh, uh, Feller can't afford to lose an inch because uh, Cole threw for a lot of yards last year and is capable. Um, moving on, uh, the Elgin game. Elgin. Uh, coaches had a chance to scout them uh, first person last week with the bye, and uh, they found out that uh, Elgin is using a second quarterback right now in addition to uh, Brett Laura. Uh, Jonathan Chris Christensen uh, is the quarterback they used last week against Elgin, and uh, Coach Sheck said that he was, uh, some of their biggest plays were when Christensen ran the ball. Uh, he's apparently a very capable runner. Um, and they used both, and uh, according to Elgin head coach Matt Allen, who I spoke with today, they'll use both again this Friday against Elk City. He likes the look uh, of both of them, and they're both capable, and it's kind of something Elk City has. Just two quarterbacks, uh, not a controversy, just uh, uh, just options um, for the Owls. So uh, another guy that uh, Sheck said coaches identified in uh, are watching the game was, um, let me find him here. Uh, tailback Taron McDaniel. Uh, he said he was just a really he just ran away from Tuttle's defense and then kind of laughed, saying, "You know, we know how fast Tuttle's defense is, and, and they are. Uh, if you're running away from Tuttle's defense, you've got to have some speed." So uh, Elgin has options and uh, some history on this game. Elk City beat Elgin 70 to 32 last year in the final game of the season. Um, but uh, it's two. It's a totally new season. Two, you know, completely different teams. So. There's no reason to think that it's just going to be a walk in the park. It's another tough opponent. Elk City has its own struggles. They're not going to have Jarve Jackson returning kicks and playing, uh, staying at the linebacker position or blocking a wide receiver. He's going to be missed. Um, though they do have Cole back, so maybe those, maybe that kind of evens you know things out a little bit uh, for Elk City. Um, uh, a little bit about Elgin's head coach. Uh, he's a lot native. He left. Uh, for a year uh, last year to go to Dunk Duncanville, Texas, and now he's back. Um, uh, his, he's got a coach on his staff. We find his name. Uh, Clarence Madden, who was a head coach at Lawton High School and won a state title there in the past. Uh, he coached their offensive line. Uh, coach Allen really likes uh, his O-line. He thinks that's a strength of this team. So um, Another thing for that Elk City defensive line, which at times is a little bit undersized, we'll have to deal with if, if it's a you know if it's a really strong group of O linemen. Um, you can bet the players that are returning for Elgin probably remember the beat down from last year, so they're they're going to be fired up. You know, you never want to use the revenge motivator. Uh, 
you know, it shouldn't be motivation, but players don't always seem to think that way. It's always in the back of their minds. And so you can expect uh, a motivated Owls team. Elk City, I guarantee they're hungry for a win after what happened to Tuttle. They uh, had a week to think about it, and it sounded like they've been uh, kind of chomping at the bit to get out there and play a game. So it'll be interesting to see how they actually respond in a game, not just in practice. Coach Sheck said this morning, focus on fundamentals has been – has faltered a little bit in the past couple weeks. He's been showing him some motivational videos of Vince Lombardi before practices, and uh, he's hoping that gets him fired up uh, and ready to play. Uh, he gathered the team at the end of practice today and said, close your eyes, envision yourself at the team banquet uh, at the end of the season uh, if you go 1-8, and eight, which would mean the, Elk, the Elks would lose every game uh, from this point on. And he said, now picture yourselves if you go 8-1 and one and you reach, uh, you know, first round of the playoffs, hold a home playoff game. Uh, he's really trying to fire them up right now. I think he knows it's a crucial point in the season. He and nobody else wants Elk City to start 1-2. and two, So it'll be interesting to see uh, how things go down uh, this Saturday or this Friday in Elgin. Um, that's all that uh, – oh, uh, I want to give a, a shout-out to a, a guy that we're going to have a feature on next week uh, – Nose guard Maroney Cota, who transferred from Burns Flat last week or last year, <laughs> and a uh, really good kid, and he is uh, working his tail off for a starting position. He got to start in practice on the defensive line, uh, working his tail off to get some playing time. So a shout out to you, Maroney. It's a pleasure talking to you. That feature will be uh, in, in next week's Daily Oak City and Sports page, um, more than likely next Wednesday. So we hope you guys will pick that up um, and. and and learn a little bit more about Maroney. He's a good kid, and he's new to town, so uh, first chance to really hear about him a little bit. Um, Saturday we'll have our game story uh, from uh, Elgin and uh, in the, in the paper the very next day. We hope you'll read that as well, and uh, we hope you enjoyed today's blog. I'm Tyler Palmatier, sports editor for the Daily Elk City, and we will see you next week.